Hello, my name is Tomasz Poszytek um, and today I wanted to show you something very, very fresh, which is not yet available uh, in the regular environments. It is, I just spotted that uh, in the preview environment and um, I was, I, I, I can't say I was so excited, but I wanted to really showcase you that new feature uh, so quickly that you see I, I don't have my hair done and I, I'm not even shaved, but that's not a point. So um, the point is, the point is that this is, that this uh, feature, this functionality uh, is built out of like two changes that we'll face, uh, well, quite soon, hopefully, uh, inside Power Automate Cloudflows in regards to sending adaptive cards to Microsoft Teams. So the first change uh, is, well, basically the change, the change will allow us to use one action to send an adaptive card to Microsoft Teams. And then we will be able to use another Cloudflow that will actually be waiting for the response from that adaptive card, which is really, really awesome because as of today, um, whenever you send an adaptive card to Microsoft Teams and wait for the response from this adaptive card, the action is going to time out after 30 days. And as of today, there is as well no other option to extend that time uh, or to build a different uh, Cloudflow logic that would allow you to, to wait longer than 30 days. Uh, but after that change, this is going to be feasible. However, what I don't like uh, so far, I mean, so far um, uh, after my tests is that there is no way to actually close that adaptive card. So even though you are able to use another Cloudflow to grab a response, even after, you know, a year, still you are not able to close that adaptive card that has been sent by the first flow. Nevertheless, this is possibly just the first step and this functionality or set of functionalities is going to be extended. Uh, and developed and enhanced with new with new with new features. So, ready? Let me show you how it works. All right. The first thing uh, I need to obviously is to sign into my Cloudflows to my PowerTomate portal, and then I mentioned you that this feature is not available within the regular environment. So, uh, what you have to do is simply you need to create your own preview environment inside your uh, Power Platform and then switch to that. Now, the next step, let me just navigate to, um, well, to my flows because I already built this, this, this set of solutions. So I have like two flows here. The first one is just posting an adaptive card to Microsoft Teams. That is really, really easy. Um, now, why am I getting a team and listing channels? This is because uh, that adaptive card I am sending in the end is as well having uh, that hidden data, which is being always sent from the adaptive card to that um, Cloudflow, which is listening uh, on the responses, so that the Cloudflow is aware from, oh gosh, from which team and from which channel this adaptive card or this response has been sent. Unfortunately, what I will show you in a moment, the trigger that is being used to catch this, this response for some reasons, it's not returning information about the team and channel. And for that purpose, you have to simply send this information explicitly uh, within your uh, adaptive card so that you can read it later. And for example, in that Cloudflow, which is catching the response uh, to be able to build such a fe functionality that uh, responds to that, um, to that message or that response from adaptive card, like under that conversation. All right, uh, the adaptive card is just like a simple gallery of kittens, so it's not really important. Uh, and, well, let me just trigger that flow right now. So you'll see it's really, really uh, simple and works like a charm. Right, so here it goes. And uh, I think I have teams somewhere here, right? I do have. So I'll navigate to cards test. This is the channel where I send. And so you can see here, this is the adaptive card that just was sent. And this Cloudflow that uh, initiated this adaptive card, it's just sending. It's not waiting for the response, right? So that's the key point. Now, how you could do, uh, how you could use, how you could use this feature? Well, I can think of um, a variety of, uh, of, of scenarios, like for example, to do 
some kind of an open survey or to, well, grab uh, task responses from multiple assignees, for example. The bad side, the downside of that is, as mentioned, you can't close this cut. So you can only react on responses coming from this cut, but you can't really uh, interact with this cut. The only thing you could do is to implement such a logic that, for example, deletes that uh, message after you grab all the responses. All right, so that is the first step. Now the second step, let me just open uh, my flows in a different uh, window in a second card, is to create a new flow that is being triggered with a new trigger, with a new trigger that is called when someone responds to an adaptive card. Fantastic new trigger. It hasn't been present yet or previously. Um, and this trigger actually um, expects two input parameters. The first one is this inputs adaptive card. Now I was thinking what in the world this, uh, this, this field here might really be waiting for because documentation behind this action is really laconic and there is no information at all. So after tests, I figured out that you simply, that you might simply want to put here uh, the design of your adaptive card that is being sent from the, uh, from the trigger flow. And that is because once you provide that schema or that full JSON of the adaptive card that is being sent in uh, one of those dynamic outcomes you can grab from uh, from the adaptive card, apart from all this information that is present here, is your custom fields or information from your custom fields. So if I remove now this uh, adaptive card JSON at all, I just leave an empty empty uh, body, then you'll notice that that the kittens is gone. So that parameter that I would be able to simply grab as um, the dynamic outcome without the further need to parse the body or to simply build my own path to uh, extract that uh, parameter from the body is gone. All right, so this is why we possibly or why this action possibly needs uh, that you input here uh, that JSON of the adaptive card you are sending. Now, the second thing is this card type ID. What is it? This is the key information that allows you to bind uh, the card that is being sent from the trigger flow with this that is listening for the responses. So here in that flow, uh, inside the post adaptive card in a chat or a channel, you'll notice that at the bottom, there is now the show advanced options. That was that is as well not present in your regular environments. And now once you expand that um, show advanced options, here you can find a new field that is called card type ID. Now the ID that you type in here is the one that this action here is listening for. So any response from any adaptive card having this type ID will trigger this second cloud flow. Now the card type ID don't necessarily need to be unique. So you can imagine a situation that you're sending the same adaptive card to, for example, multiple users in multiple um, conversations or in multiple channels, but you want to have just a single flow that is going to handle all the responses from all these adaptive cards. And then you can simply use the same card type ID for all these adaptive cards. Uh, all right. And then uh, as mentioned, within the response from this adaptive, from this trigger, despite the fact that you do see here uh, the team ID and the channel ID, in all tests I've done so far, these two um, dynamic outcomes uh, or outputs were actually empty. So I wasn't able to really uh, use them in, for example, this replay with adaptive card in a channel because uh, all times these uh, actions that were waiting for the team and channel IDs we're returning different uh, messages like 404 um, page not found or that the flow bot is unable to uh, to find that content. And then I realized that actually these two uh, variables are empty. And this is why uh, I mentioned to before, I am passing these two information as data that is being simply sent along with all the responses from adaptive card. So they can then be um, used as the dynamic values to define to which team channel this uh, response should be sent. All right, 
So this is how it works. Uh, and let me just uh, navigate back to, uh, to my adaptive cut and let's choose like curious kitty, uh, and send. And then you'll see that just in a moment, um, I will be able to see here a response that is sent from the flow that you're just so, right? And there is this small adaptive card sent uh, in, in return to my request. Now, as mentioned, you are unable, unfortunately, to anyhow interact with this adaptive card. I hope that there will be as well um, a new action added that will allow you to send a new adaptive card to replace or to refresh this adaptive card because that is the only piece that we are missing actually in this puzzle. Um, so that uh, having having this kind of uh, functionality that would allow us to replace or update this adaptive card with something new, with a new with a new design, with a new card, would allow us to accomplish many many business scenarios like really sending tasks to multiple users and then closing their tasks after they respond after the after the responses uh, or to wait for a specific number of responses and then eventually uh, after this number is met then again refresh the card with something new or to well do any kind of those scenarios that uh, allows you to for example refresh this adaptive card after each response so that you would be able to create like a dynamic dynamic um you know service or questionnaires or polls so that uh, you'd be able to just show uh, how many um employees uh chose which which answers so all these scenarios would be possible if we had an option an action that uh would be able to simply react on uh, on this trigger and by grabbing this car type ID then to allow us to simply refresh this card with something new obviously as mentioned the car type ID is not unique so that is not sufficient so like say despite uh, or apart from having the car type ID now uh, in the response content from this action we should as well have something like a card id that should be unique and with having these two uh, information i'm really expecting a new action to appear somewhere in the future that will allow us to update an existing adaptive card with a new adaptive card to accomplish very very many business scenarios that we really need to be able to accomplish all right, so thank you very much for watching. That's all from me about this new exciting trigger and this new exciting functionality. I hope you liked it. Uh, as always, I ask you to subscribe and like the video. If you have any comments, simply put them down below the video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.